Hello, I'm Arezu Gaming, and welcome back to another episode of Sandbox Showcase, a series where I talk about problems in Oxygen Not Included and how you can solve them easily and efficiently. So today I want to talk about shine bugs. Shine bugs aren't really a problem, but they're potentially a very interesting solution to light and radiation in your spaced out runs. So each shine bug, which you'll often find in the sandstone biomes, particularly like the terra biome where you start off with on terra cluster, um, each shine bug will produce a small amount of light and a small amount of radiation. This light is enough to give your dupes the lip workspace bonus, which increases their productivity by 15% on tasks with a yellow bar in general. Um, this is most important when they're going to the bathroom and doing tasks that don't have a skill that increases an attribute and gives you a corresponding bonus. So you can put shine bugs in your bathrooms and get your duplicates to go to the loo faster. So stuff like that um, can also help plants like bristle blossoms grow, etc. They also produce a very small amount of radiation. So if I just unpause it quickly, you'll see this guy is actually producing about 60 rads per cycle and um, Turner isn't particularly liking it. <laughs> um, it's not an unsafe amount of radiation. Even a small amount of radiation is very effective at killing airborne germs. Um, but the main purpose of the shine bugs and what we're going to talk about today is actually ramping up both the light and the radiation generation to the point where we can run radbot generators consistently off of them. Um, powered by solar panels that are actually running off the light of the shine bugs themselves. This is going to be called a shine bug reactor. You might have seen a few different <laughs> builds going around. So I'm going to show you mine that I've refined a little bit after the Arboreal Airheads playthrough. So you're going to want to ranch these um, to get enough shine bugs to actually fill your reactor to generate the radiation you need. So let's just make some space for that first. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of space available. So let's actually start off by just building the initial ranch for the shine bug breeding. So we'll just build a ladder going up here. And this is just going to follow the normal four tile high room structure. We're just going to do it around this shine bug here. We might as well. So... It doesn't really matter what you build these out of. The shine bugs are going to be fine at room temperature. Um, you can just start building this immediately out of whatever materials you have, and it's not going to be a problem. Uh, so I'll put some pneumatic doors over here. What you're going to want to do for the breeder ranch is you're going to want to mark out a 25 tile wide stretch. So up to where this, this uh, cliff edge is here. And then we're just going to go over here. Uh, we'll see it off on this side with some more doors. And then what we're actually going to do is we're going to confine, we're going to restrict the shine bugs to just these four, these 16 tiles here. We're going to put a door here. We're going to put another tile here. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to put a mesh tile here and we're going to drip some liquid in. It doesn't really matter what liquid you use for this. Um, you're just like, just something that you have lying around. Salt water is pretty good for this. Just use a bottle emptier um, and just drop a small amount of the liquid you want to put here brine is fine for this as well um so if you put say 10 kilograms in with the bottle emptier that's going to spill over the edges and then you can just then you can just mop it all up and um you'll just have this little blob left it's not rocket science so you'll have a little blob here and then what you'll do is you'll actually seal this back up and then you'll notice that the liquid is going to form a barrier here where it's connected to both the top tile and the bottom tile so now if we look at the shine bug, you'll see it can't actually move outside the 16 uh, tile area, but it's still satisfied. It's not cramped or crowded. Um, so this way you can fill this part of the ranch with other stuff like power generators and any other non-conflicting buildings um, you want. And the shine bugs will stay over here and get groomed quickly and conveniently by your duplicates. And then you can just remove the bottle emptier after that. You can also, instead of using a bottle emptier, use the pedestal trick where you put a pedestal down here, um, over here, and then you just deliver a one kilogram bottle of the liquid of your choice over here. Make this a mesh tile again, uh, deconstruct the pedestal, and then just get a duplicate to empty the liquid bottle over here. Doesn't really matter how you get the liquid over here, you just need the liquid. So let's actually put the uh, grooming station in as well. Let's actually get this ranch laid out. So again, it doesn't matter what materials you make this out of, Put the grooming station here and that'll be absolutely fine. You'll want to put a critter drop-off in here. This is how we're going to replace the breeders later. 
We're going to have some spare shine bugs up here and we're going to auto wrangle them as needed to refill this ranch. Shine bugs breed very quickly. They only have 25 cycles to live before they die. And once they're tame and happy and fed, uh, they will lay two eggs every three cycles. So you're going to end up with 13 shine bug eggs coming out of one adult shine bug over its lifetime, over its adult phase. So you're going to want to drop off more shine bugs here. You'll set this to eight. Each shine bug requires 12 tiles of space. Uh, and you'll put them here and you'll set this to priority nine. You want your shine bugs. You want any shine bugs that you find on the map to just get wrangled and automatically put in here. Uh, just to start off your shine bug range. So then to actually feed them, these guys eat phosphorite. So you'll put a critter feeder in here and you can grab some phosphorite from a jungle biome. So one of these biomes with the Drekos in them. Um, you'll find large quantities of this and Drekos also poop phosphorite when they eat plants like palm lilies, like pinch peppers, etc. So if you have a ranch of Drekos, it will absolutely produce enough phosphorite to feed a ranch of shine bugs and you'll have plenty to spare. So generally, you're not going to run out of too much phosphorite. You're always going to be able to feed at least one shine bug ranch um, just off of what's on the map and just having a couple of Drekos. You definitely don't need more than one shine bug branch for actually getting this reactor up and running. Um, so one thing about shine bugs is there are lots of variants. Um, they have chances of laying these variant eggs if you feed them different things, but we're not going to worry about that. Some of them produce slightly more light, some of them produce no light, some of them produce slightly more decor. Um, but the food requirements get more and more expensive, so generally I don't think it's worth doing unless you're just doing it for the challenge and you want the fancy shine bugs <laughs> for your duplicates following you around the base. But we're just going to talk about how to get this shine bug reactor up and running, so we're not going to worry about any of that. So, yeah, we'll just go here. We'll set this to phosphorite, um, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we just dug out some phosphorite, so now we can set it in this menu here, and that's all absolutely fine. So, we're going to want to put an auto sweeper in this ranch. It's not going to really matter... Um, why does it say it's outside of a stable? Oh, that's right, I forgot. You need to put one extra tile over here, and that is going to make it a 96 tile room. And then it's going to actually count as a stable. And then Bert is going to come and start cleaning up this shine bug. So while Bert is doing that, um, we're going to put an auto sweeper in here. This is all going to be room temperature. It doesn't really matter what you make this stuff out of. Um, you can make it out of lead, that's not going to cause any issues. So we'll just put a lead auto sweeper in here. Um, you're going to want to take the eggs out and you're going to want to send them to um, a spare room where you're going to have spare shine bugs for refilling the breeder ranch and then you're going to want to send them to the actual reactor. So we're just going to put a conveyor loader here. Again, it doesn't really matter what material you make this out of. You can make this out of lead um, if your base is cooled. If it's not cooled, you can make it out of something more heat resistant. Shine bugs have a temperature range of... Get out of the way, Ruby. Shine bugs have a temperature range of up to 50 degrees. So if the room is too hot for lead, it's going to be too hot for shine bugs. So absolutely just build this stuff out of lead if you have it and cool the room appropriately. So yeah, this is going to be set to eggs. And that's going to get the eggs out of here. Um, what I would suggest doing is wherever your phosphorite source is, we're just going to suggest it's this conveyor loader here. You're going to want to put a receptacle in this breeder ranch. And you're going to want to have that on a lower priority than the critter beater. So this is currently priority 5. Set this to priority 8. And then what we'll do is we'll just put a conveyor rail going down here. And then all the phosphorite can be just delivered from your Drekka ranches, the map, your storage area, wherever it is, to the receptacle automatically. And then the auto sweeper will load the critter feeder and your dupes won't have to worry about that unless they feel like doing it. Um, so you want to hook this all up with a power wire. Um, I would just power this off whatever is powering your base. I would like to keep the power supply to the reactor separate because it's going to self-power itself. Uh, so we're just going to use a dev generator just to illustrate this. So that's going to hook up there. And then the excess eggs from the shine bugs are going to go in this conveyor loader. And what I'll actually do is rearrange this conveyor belt a little bit just so that it's nice and neat. But yeah, this is just where your phosphorite is going to be coming in from. So that's going to go over here, and that's actually going to go into the spare room. Um, so because the shine bugs breed so quickly, 
they're going to die quite frequently in the breeder ranch and you're going to want to replace them immediately so you're going to want another four by four room up here and what we're going to do is we're going to put a critter drop off in here we're going to set this to zero critters and auto wrangle surplus we're going to set that on priority eight and what we're going to do is we're actually going to put a critter sensor in the breeder ranch and that is going to lead to a door in here so you don't need to put liquid on this one uh, but this is just to prevent the dupl uh, duplicants from actually going to the critter drop-off unless this room is lacking a shine bug. So we'll bring the automation wire over to the door from the critter sensor. And we're just going to set this to below eight critters. If there's below eight critters in this room, then this door will unlock and then the duplicants will be able to auto wrangle excess shine bugs from this room. So in terms of excess shine bugs, we are going to have this conveyor rail go up here and then back down here. And then that's where it's going to go to the reactor. And we're going to put a chute in here. And we're going to have another critter sensor that's going to be connected up here. And that is going to be set to below eight critters or eggs. So what will happen is your shine bugs will breed in this room. They The eggs will go in here and fill this up to eight eggs. And then the extra eggs are going to go to the reactor and they're going to fill up the reactor. So we're just going to put some more stuff in here as well. We're going to put an auto sweeper in here that is just going to um, grab any stuff from the dead shine bugs, move it wherever we want it to. We're going to put another conveyor loader in here as well. That is just going to go up here. Make sure if you've got the auto sweeper here that the conveyor loader is here so we can actually access this tile. It can't access this tile and eggshell um whatever else we have in here we're just going to dump over here send it to wherever you want to process all of your ingredients and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to have a conveyor receptacle over here and this is something i'm going to talk about later this is the, <laughs> this is the final destination for all of your excess shine bug eggs after the reactor is full but i'll talk more about that in a minute so Again, we'll just plug this in uh, to the wire here that's running everything. Doesn't really matter what you do for this. And suffice to say, once we have eight shine bugs in here, there is a fairly large amount of radiation. Again, you're just going to be wrangling these from across the map. So here you go. There's eight shine bugs. And now you can see there's a slight hazard in radiation from here. If your rancher is in here all day, uh, they, they would get minor radiation sickness. But um, these guys... Um, these guys aren't going to need ranching too often, so you just want to make sure your dupes aren't hanging around here idle like these guys are. If you have a Radiation Eater dupe um, that can do ranching, I would recommend giving them access to this room and not giving the other duplicates access to that to this bit here. You can give them access to this bit here and that's not going to cause any issues. So now this room is full, so this door is closed. The eggs are going to get dropped off up here. And then this is going to fill up to eight shine bugs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then that chute is going to close. And then the extra shine bugs are going to go over to the reactor. And this just makes sure that you're always going to have eight breeders available. If a, if a shine bug or any combination of shine bugs ever dies in this room, this door will open and you can just auto wrangle them immediately. You could do something similar with an unpowered incubator, but I prefer doing it this way with the critter drop off. It takes up the same amount of space. I feel like it's a little bit less prone to failure. So, the actual reactor itself. Um, there's two ways you can go about this. You can either have it in oxygen, where it's going to produce slightly less radiation, but it's a bit easier to cool ambiently with the rad bolt generators. Or you can have it in space in a vacuum where you're going to get more radiation, but you're going to need to hook up conduction panels to actually cool the radbot generator. So I'm I'm just going to illustrate uh, what happens if you want to build it near your base. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that your dupes don't have access to this area after it's built because the radiation is going to be huge and it will cook your dupes <laughs> and incapacitate them. So yes, make sure to put some doors here. Once you're actually doing the construction, uh, once you've actually done the construction, lock these doors. Your duplicates do not need to access this area. It's nice to have it next to your base, but it, you don't want your dupes just wandering in there doing various tasks. So this might be how it looks like next to where your base is. We'll just clear a little bit more space over here as well. Just give me a second. 
So here we are. We've got some space. We're going to actually build the shine bug reactor now. So we're going to want to put some solar panels in. These uh, require a little bit of glass. So you're going to need a glass forge. And what we're going to do is we're going to put one here. We're going to leave a, th a size three gap. And then we're going to put two solar panels underneath it as well. We're going to put a solar panel here. We're going to put a solar panel here. Put some tiles in here so the duplicates can walk along to all of this as well. And we'll connect this all up with a completely independent conductive wire. You will need a conductive wire for this bit because it's going to be producing over one kilowatt and consuming over one kilowatt. So just connect all the solar panels together. Um, you want to put some transparent tiles here. The shine bugs are going to be placed on this tile here where I'm putting the chutes. So that rail is just going to come up here. And then um, I'll talk more about what happens later with this receptacle. So the shine bugs are all going to be sat here. We're going to constrain them to this one tile using blobs of liquid like we have over here. Um, but suffice it to say, they're going to be staying here. Light is going to be shining on these four solar panels. In this case, from the sides here through the liquid. And in this case, just down here through the transparent tiles. Um, it doesn't matter too much what you use for these. I like to use diamond if I have access to the oil biome because the diamond resists radiation or it blocks radiation a bit better just in case your duplicates are wondering down here once the reactor is up and running. Uh, but glass is fine for this as well because you already have the glass forge for actually making the solar panels. Um, so we'll just put a shine bug here just to show what it looks like. In fact, let's put 10 shine bugs here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That is 10 shine bugs. If we have a look at the light overlay, uh, you can see the light's coming out over here. It's coming down onto these as well. You're going to want to put some liquids in to constrain these shine bugs. And in this case, the liquid you pick does matter because it absorbs light. So you want the liquid that absorbs the least amount of light, which is pure water. You do not want to use salt water for this because salt water absorbs more light and makes the solar panels less efficient. And you want these solar panels to be as efficient as possible. So again, you can just use a bottle emptier. Um, you can just put a bottle emptier here, dump a load of water, and then sweep it up. Um, yeah, you're going to want to initially make this an airflow tile, just so that, um, no, a mesh tile, just so that the water can actually rip through. And then you'll want to replace that with a, with a window tile again uh, to let the light through. So yeah, we're going to put the, we're going to put the little bits of liquid here. And then you're going to want some solid tiles up here to constrain the to constrain the shine bugs. It doesn't really matter too much what you make these out of. Um, the radbot generators are gonna go in this space here, but all the radiation is gonna come from this tile and shine out uh, like a 45 degree angle. So it literally doesn't matter what you build as your tile here, it's not going to block the radiation. So you can use diamond for this if you wanted, um, even though it's a radiation shield, but I would just build regular base tiles here. It's not really a problem. And then you'll want to put an airflow tile on the top, um, that is going to block the light. So as you can see, the light is not getting through, uh, but it does not block any radiation. So you can see these, these uh, solar panels are running now, and then we will actually put the rad bot generators over here. It doesn't matter too much what you make these out of. So they're gonna absorb from these three tiles here. If we go back to the radiation map mode, so you can see at the moment, we have 10 shine bugs here. Um, we are getting about 357 rads per cycle on this radbot generator from 10 shine bugs. And then these two edge ones get are getting about 297 rads per cycle. So slightly less, but still a fairly significant amount. If we look at the amount of light that's getting through to these. You'll see with zero blockage, we're getting about 3.34 watts per shine bug on these solar panels, these two here. You're getting about 3.66 watts per shine bug on this panel down here, and you're getting slightly less at 2.23 watts per shine bug on this panel down here. And then what we're going to do is we're actually just going to con connect the radbot generators directly to the solar panel. Now, quick maths. To get these to actually run, each radbot generator requires 480 watts. It consumes 480 watts. So in total, the system is consuming 1.44 kilowatts. These, what we're going to do, because this solar panel is going to uh, generate less power than these three, is we're going to max out these three. These max out at 380 watts each. So that's going to be 1.14 kilowatts from these. And that leaves the remaining 300 watts that needs to be generated by this solar panel. 
So because each shine bug is contributing 2.23 watts, you're going to need 135 shine bugs to act uh, that are satisfied to actually get this solar panel to 300 watts and thus allow the build to self power. So we're going to put the we're going to put the 135 shine bugs here. And I'll talk a bit about the maths behind how you're actually going to get that, and uh, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we're back. We've reloaded it, and now the shine bugs are working properly. If if the solar panels do deplete and these shine bugs don't say that they're unhappy, um, then you just need to reload it, and that will fix it. Yeah, you can see the radbot generators are firing away. Um, there is a lot of radiation coming off of this. If your duplicates are anywhere near this, I mean, you can just hear all that clicking, can't you? If your duplicates are anywhere near this, they are going to have a bad time. So once this is all built, you're going to want to get to lock these doors because they do not need to come in here. Now, one thing as well, um, some maths about the breeding. So these shine bugs are going to produce 13 eggs in their lifespan. They're going to produce um, two eggs every three cycles. And that is going to result in 5.33 eggs per cycle coming from your breeder ranch of 8. They're going to go over here. You have locked yourself next to the reactor. That's not very good. I've given the duplicates a gym so that they don't actually uh, just stand in the shine bug areas uh, when they don't need to. Uh, someone will come lock this door eventually. Um, so, yes, you've got the rabbit generators here. They're producing a fair amount of heat. Uh, 15 KDTUs per cycle. These solar panels don't generate any heat. Um, so you probably are going to want to cool your base when you're doing this to make sure that the shine bugs themselves don't overheat. Um, if you're doing this in a vacuum, uh, these will produce slightly more radbots per cycle. It'll increase by about 12%. You'll get about 540 from this one. You'll get about 460, 450-ish from these two on the side. So if you have it in a vacuum, it does technically produce more radbots, the same amount of shine bugs, but you're then going to have to cool everything with conduction panels. So you'll want to make these out of a conductive material. You want to set them up over each generator, and then you just want to set up some kind of cooler loop that's going to run through it. Um, I'm not going to talk exactly about what you need to do for this, because it will vary uh, depending on what your, your save looks like. But you will need to actively cool them if it's in vacuum. This is going to fill at a rate of 5.3 Shinebug eggs per cycle from the breeder ranch. These shine bugs in here um, will actually lay an egg before they die. They won't starve before they die at their natural age of 25. So the eggs will replace the shine bugs in the reactor will replace themselves. You're going to have a net increase of 5.3 eggs per cycle, so long as the breeder guys are happy. So how are you actually going to stop this from filling with so many shine bugs that it kills your computer from the frames lag? <laughs> So what I like to do is I just like to put a radiation sensor here in this tile and you'll want to set this to about 1,500 rads. Set this to open the chute if it's below 1,500 rads. And then if it's above that threshold, the chute will close and then you can continue the conveyor rail over here. And then this is what this receptacle is for. So all of the excess shine bug eggs can go into this receptacle and then they will just sit in the receptacle not being loaded into this auto uh, sweeper into this conveyor loader and they will just evolve into raw egg being stuck rotting in the, in the conveyor receptacle. So they'll turn into raw egg. Um, you would put that in here and then you would send that raw egg wherever you want it to go. Uh, you could cook it into omelettes with a grill. That is an option. But bear in mind as well that raw egg will actually state change into omelette at 72 degrees C-ish. So if you have anything hot on your map at all, um, like a natural gas vent, like a steam vent, like a cool steam vent, that will do. Anything that gets above 72 degrees, you just dump your raw egg there and it will cook to omelette. And then you can send your omelette back to wherever you want to store it. And <laughs> that way your duplicates don't have to cook the omelette. Each shine bug egg only provides 100 calories of raw egg. And to actually make an omelette, you need 1,600 calories. So <laughs> trying to actually cook the shine bug eggs into omelettes with the grill is kind of cumbersome. <laughs> so I would recommend just state changing it with something hot instead. I'm sure you have no limited amount of heat sources in your run. Um, all you need to do is set up a relatively straightforward breeder ranch just with a li liquid blob here. 
Get your eight shine bugs in here, happy and filled with uh, phosphorite from your Draco Ranch. Um, have eight eggs get dumped in here by this chute with the critter center set to below eight critters. Yep, like this. And then this will fill with another eight shine bugs. This door will open when the amount of shine bugs in here drops uh, below eight. And then they can auto wrangle a guy from here and put it in here. And it's relatively frictionless and easy. And you end up with eight readers consistently. And then once this room is full, you send them to the actual reactor itself. Um, you can get, if you get 135 shine bugs in here, you will produce enough light with the solar panels in this configuration to run the rad bolt generators. You don't need a battery connected to this either. Uh, just connect the wire directly and it'll be absolutely fine. I wouldn't recommend powering anything else off this because as you increase the number of shine bugs, you're only powering up this solar panel by another 80 watts. If you want to increase the amount of radiation, you will get more radiation from the shine bugs linearly with the population. So if that's all you're after, that's fine. But you're not going to be able to power anything more than 80 watts consistently off of this if you have more than 135 shine bugs. And at that point, the FPS lag starts to become a bit significant. There are actually mods for replicating what shine bugs do without the lag of actually having the critters here. I believe it turns it into a building that <laughs> converts shine bug eggs into light and radiation. Um, that's a pretty interesting mod. Um, I'll put that in the description. You can have a look at it if you want. But this is this is how you get the O Natural shine bug reactor. And you can send these. You can send these rad bolts wherever you want them to go. But yeah, just make sure to cool this because the area is already heated up quite a bit. But yeah. Quite a few rad bolts. Um, this is definitely a good source of radiation just for um, your planetary payload launches. If you don't have wheeze warts available on your save and you don't have any crash satellites, it could be a pretty convenient source of radiation. You can scale it up relatively quickly. It's going to take about 27, 28 cycles to get this many shine bugs from your breeder ranch, assuming you've got eight shine bugs in here cranking it out which isn't a huge amount of time. So you can get this running fairly quickly and get those rad bolts. You can use that for your radiation research or for running payloads or for even making diamond with the diamond press if you have a load of hatches. Um, the diamond press does require a fair bit of rad bolts, but you can actually... One more thing, very quickly. Uh, there's going to be a lot of eggshell accumulating in here from the shine bugs. So you are going to want to put an auto sweeper over here. Um, if you put it directly to the left of the ra radiation sensor here, it will be able to reach that middle tile. Similarly, if you put one over here, it will be fine. Uh, you'll want to power this independently from the reactor. That can go there. And then you can just put a conveyor loader over here. Again, this will all need cooling if it's in space. And that can just go directly over to the chute here where you're dumping the rest of your eggshell. But it's important to build this so that your dupes aren't coming in and manually grabbing eggshell. You do not want your dupes in here manually grabbing eggshell. Don't do it. But yeah, that's essentially the build. A relatively short video today, but I hope this helps you um, identify what you can do with shine bugs. Let me know how you like to handle shine bugs in your playthroughs, which are not included. We play on Twitch fairly regularly. We are currently doing a run on Oasis where we... I've had chat ban various exploits, so we're doing things the old-fashioned ways in a few cases. Uh, we do have plenty of other discussion videos and tier list videos and meme videos to do with Oxygen Not Included on the YouTube channel. So if you like what you've seen, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel and you'll get regular updates. All the Twitch mods go on there. I do play other games like Dyson Sphere Program and Mega Aquarium as well. There is a Discord where we like to hang out and post memes and builds as well, for oxygen not included. If you have any questions, there's usually either myself or someone else there hanging out, um, available to answer your questions. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed us confining all of these shine bugs to like a little, a little cube in the middle of our base <laughs> as all the dupes pee themselves. Uh, but yes, thank you very much. There are also some new emotes available on Twitch. Um, we had a big hype train recently. So, so I'll allow Whiskers to do the extended credits today. If you are one of those new subscribers who has gifted a sub, feel free to come and say hi on the Twitch channel um, this week. And feel free to use your extra emotes. But yes, take care and I'll see you soon, hopefully. Bye for now. 
Whiskers sends thanks to the following Twitch subscribers and YouTube members. Oh my goodness. Alba 6 C D A T P S S Bryn Ree, Club Step 2000 K, Cyber Gods, Duvid, Dotterly, Ekarea, L T424, Flatulent Hole, F R D Dot, Flynn Flan, Grey Area, Kahako the Fay, Laden Swallow, Malafunction 808, Markow Gamer, MCDJ Cookies, Mitboy42, Mordev, Mr. Pink Panther, Neo Deus Machina, NN Kiefer, Priest Zero, Regan Wolf 2017, Shenry, Sinister Plank, Sulbian, The Bat Guy, The Max Not Binary, Thork, Uglavisk, Wanderer 77, Wojum, Wolfregan X D Got Creepered. Blimey!